Hello, I'm Instana CTO Chris Bailey, and today I am joined by Brad Blantett, who is one of our technical leaders working on the automation framework inside Instana. So, Brad, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've been working on. Sure, my name is Brad Blantett. As Chris was saying, I am a dev lead on team remediation. And the stuff that we're working on is really cool. We've been working on um, an action framework that helps SREs to reduce their MTTR by having actions that they can run, right? And these actions can be either manual or they can be automatic. And, you know, the whole purpose of it is, is to keep the SRE within Istana and give them direction on how to get through the problem. Yeah, and th th this is kind of like different to the way, you know, things have kind of worked elsewhere and in the past, and that rather than the kind of like sending a notification out to some kind of automation framework that then has to understand that notification and do the right thing, those actions are right there in Instana. So the, the user, when they have an incident, you, and we're telling them what the problem is through our instant analysis, they then get shown what available automations that they can they can choose to take, and it's right there in front of them. They can run it directly from Instana. Absolutely. Yeah, so th th those are good points. They, they don't have to leave Istana. They're there. Um, you know, as they're, if they're like going through a manual action or they're doing manual steps, they can capture those in an action. And then later on, they can take those steps and create automation out of those steps. Right. So it's kind of a nice, you know, flow, um, kind of, I'm in the moment, how can I solve this? You know, an SRA is probably gonna go out there and, and run some commands in, his, in the system. And then if they work, the next step would kind of be like a post-mortem. Next time I see this, I want the next SRE to have this action so that they can automatically run these and cut that MTTR down even more. Yeah, and this is all about, yeah, that second half of the instant life cycle, right? You know, Instana is yes. already great at detecting your problem, creating an instant, grouping those problems in, letting you kind of understand where the problem started. This is now about giving you know, ops teams the ability to press buttons to take actions to actually resolve quickly. Exactly, Chris, exactly. Okay, um, so can you show us it working? Can you sh show us a little bit of how that, yeah, how that actually manifests? Uh, okay, so Chris, this is how the action framework works. We have an action catalog, and you can find that over here in the left navigation. Um, we're about to go GA, so this will be showing um, automatically. Um, today, you have to turn on the feature flags, but um, it, by end of April here, this should be right here on the navigation. And what we have here is we have the ability for um, clients to come in and create actions. And we support two types of actions. The first action is a manual action. It's for what we also like to call prescriptive. And they're kind of manual steps that a human would have to do in order to you know, either remediate, mitigate, or diagnose a problem. And we also have automation actions. And the automation actions um, can be of different types, right? They can be um, of Ansible or script, or we've got um, webhook, doc links. Um, these actions will uh, you know, allow you to quickly uh, reach out to these third-party endpoints to either you know, discover artifacts like for Ansible, these are being these are playbooks that are being discovered. Um, you can also go out and um, you know run your your actions against other third party uh, endpoints like um, GitHub, GitLab. So let me show you how to create that real quick. If I say new new action here, all right? You give your name, your description, and here are the types. So we've got uh, Jira, um, GitLab, GitHub, manual HTTP. Um, HTTP is basically a webhook. Mm -hmm. It'll um, allow you to talk to the third party, wait for that callback to come in. And then scripts, we support Bash and Python. So what's cool about this is, you know, you can go out and pull in the scripts that you might have somewhere in Box or some other tool, and now bring them into Astana. And once you have them into Astana, when an event comes in, 
you can create a policy to associate these actions to it. So if I come down here, I have this too much CPU usage by uh, user process that came in. And when I click on that, you can see down here, we have these associated policies. Now, associated policies, um, you might ask, why isn't it just an action? Well, policies is the binding that we needed between the action and the event, but it also has other criteria. The other criteria is, you know, maybe I want this action to run automatically. So every time an event comes in, we will run this action. We actually had a customer um, who came back and said that, uh, you know what, there's this event that comes in and it goes away so quick that we can't get any diagnostic information to figure it out. And we spent a lot of time doing this. So now that we have the ability for us to create a policy and set that automatically, now when that event comes in, we can capture that data, log it somewhere, put it in a GitHub ticket or, or GitLab or Jira or whatever your flavor is and get that information to them. Okay, so this so is kind of like, you know, maybe in a scenario where I've been triggering you know, these actions manually for this kind of problem quite frequently. I'm happy for it to just run automatically or in the case that you talked about, you know, the window of time in order to run this is so small, you kind of do need to run it automatically in order to capture that diagnostic data at the time of the problem. Exactly. In, you know, we're just really growing this out because there's other feedback we're getting to you. Maybe they don't want this to run um, if this event, there's an event that's coming in too frequently and they don't want to, you know, kind of peg their system with these actions running. They want to be able to set, um, you know, a number of times that the action runs or they want to set a window like this only runs on the weekend. So we're building out that functionality and that, you know, calls us to come into this policy layer um, that's, you know, more, uh, it's better than just being able to associate to like a single action. We can layer our conditions around it. Now, you kind of said that the, the, the list of actions could be, you know, it could be triggering a webhook, so an HTTP call, it could be triggering a script, it could you know, be working with Git or Jira. Um, we have the ability to discover actions by cap connecting to things like your Ansible catalog and importing those. Right? So we've got quite a range of actions. What happens when you actually launch one of those? How much visibility do you get inside Instana of you know, the fact that that action is running and its progress and its outcomes and so on? Yeah, that's a great question. Let's, let's try it, right? So before this um, meeting, um, let me move this a little bit. I kicked off an event uh, that we were just looking at. It's an issue. So um, I, I had a, a VM that had an agent running on it and I created a fault, basically stressing that CPU um, on that machine. So when I click on this event, I can come down here and I've already associated these policies, but we also recommend we we're leveraging AI and we're using NLP, we're using um, Watson X, um, which we could talk about after this. And we're, um, you know, using other AI engines to basically uh, give us a score so that when the SRE comes in in that critical time, we're bubbling up actions that are, will be the most helpful to them. And what's cool about this is the way that we generate these actions is we look at the action definition. And by looking at the action definition, we can generate these actions with our generative tools, or you know we can do NLP and kind of introspect the event and look at the action and its tags and try to bubble them up using our NLP. But I've already associated um, these actions to this event. And if I, I had set one up, if you see right here, this is an automatic one. So like I was telling you a minute ago, when this event comes up, we already have an action that's running in the background to do some diagnostics, right? It's getting the top CPU um, 
processes. So if I come over here to automation, I look at the action history, you can see right here, this was already run. So now I can just click on it. Because this is a script, we're leveraging the logging inside Astana to take the feedback from the action that's being run on the agent and we're feeding it into the logging system. So, you know, you are asking Chris, you know, how much information can I get? We are pulling back all of that information that we're seeing from the action being executed and capturing it here so that the user never really has to live. And you can see here, you know, I quickly can see, okay, I've got a rogue stress um, process that's eating up my CPU, uh, you know, which speeding up my C CPU uh, computation. So I'm going to go back to this event. And I said, well, that's, that's really good information. Um, I got that without having to do anything. It was automatically done. So if I go back to the open event and I click on this, and now maybe I want to see what kind of diag diagnostic information Maybe it's early in the morning. I haven't used these automatic scripts before, and I just want to get the manual steps. So I take a look at these steps that we've curated, and it gives the SRE some manual things to do in order to go and try to remediate or diagnose this issue. Okay, this is cool. That's good information. I can do that. But let's say I might already be familiar with a script that I've used in the past and I want to go ahead and remediate this. So here is an Ansible script, and this goes back again to your question, Chris, of how far can we follow these life cycles of the action executing, the event getting remediated, the information being fed into Astana. We can get pretty far. So if I say run here, um, I'm gonna pick my agent that, uh, I'm sorry, the, the VM that has the problem associated with it, and I'm gonna pick the triggering agent, and I want this to kill the stress process command. So I'm going to run this. I can go to my action history page here. And once this comes up, you can see it's in progress. So what's going on? Where is this in progress? Well, it's running out here in Ansible, right? So if I come up here to the jobs, I can see here at 125, this just ran, it went out, it killed all the process, stress processes. I come back into Astana, right? I can go look at the log. Whoops, let me make sure I get the right action. Oh. So you can see here that the action was successful, right? So when I click on this guy, I go look at the logs and I'm gonna get the same output that the Ansible controller has inside of its window. So you can see it's the very same input. So I'm here in Astana, I'm able to remediate, I'm able to get um, the information back. We can go now and look and see if the event has been remediated. So if we look here, uh, give it a second, it takes a minute, we'll come back. You can already see over here, the metrics have dropped. It's tailing as soon as it hits the grace period, this will end. Okay, so rather than having to go out to Ansible Automation Platform to run the automation, I can do that directly from the context of my instant. That's making a request out to Ansible. That's doing the execution. We get the results, the logs, the output directly inside the tool. And of course, we then see the event clears itself, the instant closes automatically. Exactly, Chris. Right, that is awesome. We've got quite a lot of you know, good capabilities there, right? It's called the Action Framework, and I think it does provide us a framework. If, you know, if you've got actions, um, we can use AI NLP to match those actions to the problem. You can write policies to you know, deliberately state that these are the ones I want to have recommended. You can run those automatically. So what's coming next, right? What, how are we kind of building on top of this? Great question. And, um, you know, the differentiator, our competitors can do this, right? They can remediate um, issues that are coming in. 
and they have action frameworks. But our differentiator is the AI, Chris. As you know, you, you're our leader in our space and you drive this direction down to us. But the, the AI, we're trying to first, as you saw and I alluded to, their actions there are being generated offline with Watson X based off the event definitions from Astana. So what that means is we're taking those event data, asking Watson X to help us with a script or with a manual step and to be able to take that script and use it. Now there's gotta be some curation that goes on there and that's kind of, we do help out with curation because we wanna make sure what's in there is right. So that's kind of the, the next step. Um, we can talk about the next, next step, which I know you know about. And if you want to talk about that, you can. Um, I'll leave that to you. Yeah, so th this is kind of where we're using generative AI to generate the content, right? You know, it's all well and good to have a framework by which if you've got automations, you can run them. If you've got policies, we can recommend actions. It's kind of like, how do you know what those actions should be? How do you get an implementation of those actions? And yes, you know, as I'm fully aware, that's the work that we've been doing under intelligent remediation using generative AI, what's next, which yes, I'm pretty sure we're gonna talk about in uh, a, a future installment of Inside Instana. Um, so thank you, Brad, for kind of coming and talking to me and us uh, today. And yeah, sure. I'm, I'm excited to see what comes next for, for automation in Instana. Thank you, Chris.